<sighs> I was just relishing the moment. I just dig it when you show up. <sighs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is Wednesday, January 11th, which means tomorrow is Thursday, which means I've got a live stream between 4 and 5 Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube. And of course, we're talking about OTC and penny stocks there as well, but we're talking to our viewers. So if you've got some stocks you'd like us to take a look at, stop in tomorrow. I do put that link up in Twitter, lots of Facebook sites, Discord. Hopefully you'll find it. I'm sure it's somewhere on my YouTube site as well. So I'll be looking to see you at 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Now we do the same thing on this show as we do with all my shows. We look at OTC and penny stocks. Now they're not the same thing. They kind of sound like it, but they're not. OTC stocks, well, there's lots of penny stocks on the OTC, but a penny stock is any stock under $5. There's a lot of stocks on the OTC that are way over five bucks. But the major exchanges also have stocks that are under five bucks. So you can find these on every single market and I love to play them all. Matter of fact, I actually find more benefits playing the ones on the major exchanges. There's a lot of benefits from being able to trade for free to more oversight. <laughs> it just feels safer there. But I do do a lot of investing in the OTC market, do a lot of due diligence there. Matter of fact, all of that right there is my due diligence for the OTC market. That is news I get right here from the otcmarkets.com website. I don't have to go running around the internet to find any of this. All of it is right here, comes in chronologically all through the day. And right there, I guess you've got maybe a week's worth. Oldest is at the top, newest is down at the bottom. And this is real good news, folks. You know the sort of things I'm looking for. Well, that's the sort of stuff you're going to find. So enjoy. Now, when I do my research on OTC stocks, I use this site. Now, actually, I use it for virtually all my stocks. I always start here. If I can't find what I'm looking for, then I can go out. But starting here saves me a heck of a lot of time, especially with OTC stocks, because this site is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. These are the people that matter. Who cares who else <laughs> updates it? They have all that important information we're looking for. So stop wasting your time running around the internet. Come here first. See if if we've got what you're looking for. Probably do. All right, let's take a look at our OTC market today. It was really shabby yesterday. I did notice by the end of our show, and I didn't mention it, the day had gotten a little bit better than where we had seen it, and it was really pathetic where we saw it. So let's see what we got here. Right now, that's looking bad. Our trades are under 250, under 5, mil, or 5 billion shares, and we're just floating over $1 billion. Let's Get wild. Oh, really? <laughs> That's not my idea of wild. All right, so we just jumped a smidge on everything. $1.3 billion, 5 billion shares, 220 trades. A pathetic day, going nowhere fast. e gads. All right, let me brush that off. All right, I've got some stocks I want to show you today. These are stocks that have potential, are making runs, and of course, where would we be without another bankruptcy? All right, let me show you what I got. All right, I'm ready to jump into the first stock here, and while I was getting things set up, you can see that our day is still increasing. We're up to 1.4 billion in dollar volume, 5.3, we were only at five before for our share volume, and we're moving our trades up too. Still a slow day, but she's still growing. It hasn't all tallied up yet. So the first stock we're gonna take a look at is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker VRME, Verify Me. Had a pretty good day all in all without any new news, no new filings. But she's got a lot of telltale signs of a company that's about ready to explode. They've got some hot technology which we are gonna take a look at. Their revenues are increasing very quickly. And there were a lot of Form 4s that have been filed, which aren't S1s or 8 Ks, but Form 4s are important because they're insider buys and sells of the stock. And these are all on the right side of the coin. So let's take a look here at VRME. She had a pretty decent day. She finished at $1.73 with 39.5% gains. We won't complain about that. But would you like more? We can give you more. Just go to her warrant. Check this out. 
ticker VRMEW. Just put a W on the back end. See if they got a warrant. They're going to be a lot cheaper. And with just a little volume, they move faster and farther. Look what we had today, folks. Finished at just under 23 cents with 227% gains. It's the same company. One's a warrant, though. One's the common stock. Don't let that warrant stuff bother you. Just think of them as stocks. They've just got a different name, a warrant stock. So this thing ran hard. Now, I want to show you how this is so valuable. Let's look at VRME's relative volume for today. She's normally only doing 23,000 shares under the radar. Nobody's been paying attention to this company, which is sad because they've got some great technology on a very broad basis that I think a lot of companies are going to standardize into the industries. So this company did 563,000 shares today, and that got her her 39%. Well, look at our uh, volume on our warrant. She normally does 6.7 thousand shares. Today, she only did 4 thousand shares. 4 thousand shares compared to 563 thousand shares. This got 39%. This got 227%. I literally mean it when I say on little volume, they move farther and faster than the common stock does. So whenever you have an option to play the warrant, consider the warrant. Fact of the matter is there's a lot less warrants than there are shares of stock. So you've always got a low float if you want to think of it that way. So let's take a look at VRME. What is this company about? And it is important, so I'm going to share a little more information with you than I normally do. They tell us here that Verify Me is a leader in multi-factor authentication and anti-counterfeiting technologies which prevent identity theft counterfeiting, and fraud in the physical and cyber worlds. Verify Me's advanced fraud prevention technologies are designed to be used by pharmaceutical and medical device companies, high-end retailers, the gaming industry, and governments worldwide. For everything. <laughs> Why don't they just say that? Verify Me's physical technology authenticates products, documents, and currency with a suite of property security inks and pigments. Its digital technology authenticates people by performing multi-factor verification and is scalable for use across platforms, including PCs, tablets, smartphones, and wearable personal device. Now, I'm not going to get super deep into this, but I do want to cover enough so you can see what this is all about. So we've jumped on over to their website here. This is www.verifyme.com. Real easy. Now I want to go into a little bit of this because they've got a broad range of how they protect things, but it is awesome. And I can see this being adopted by lots of different industries because they can do it. They tell us here that counterfeiting impacts revenue imperils reputation and threatens consumer safety. Verify Me offers multiple levels of protection including tamper resistant labels, QR codes, NFC chips, and ultra secure invisible inks and pigments. As any visible code is susceptible to being removed or destroyed, our highly secure invisible inks can be integrated into product labels or embedded into the products themselves at the point of the manufacturer so they are impossible to identify or remove. Now here's the basic layout of the sort of stuff that they have. Verify link. This is an invisible link that is on the label. So when you use your phone, it'll actually take you to a website that says this product is real. You've got the real thing in your hands. Verify chip is a little tiny silicone chip that actually works with radio frequencies. You don't even have to see the item to read the information. The problem with that is in case it gets snapped or broke, it's not going to work. Verify label, QR codes, and tamper evident labels to safeguard products. You know what a QR code is. Well, now they've got this invisible code overlaid on it. So you got two codes there that have to work together. Verify code, serialization to support, track, and trace authentication. It's a serial number that goes in that can't be seen. That will tell you where this product started from, whose hands it's gone through, and where it's at now. Again, that verifies the product you're getting safe. And this one's real interesting. Verify thread woven into apparel such as uniforms. They might do a spiral graph or something so small that our naked eye can't see it, but it is woven into the fabric, these little intricate patterns. But 
I want to get even a little bit deeper to this because they just do so much, folks. They can cover everything. Let's take a look real quickly. They work with microtext, also known as microprinting. It is printing of characters or symbols so small that they cannot be read with the human eye. Now, a $100 bill has microprinting on it. Go get yourself a magnifying glass and look around the, the bill and around Benjamin Franklin's head. You'll see some of those lines aren't lines. They're words, they're sentences, very, very tiny printed. Ultraviolet black light ink, self-explanatory. You're gonna need a black light to see the invisible picture, fingerprint, whatever it is that's on there to mark it. Tagents, tagents are, well, they're kind of like beacons. They're invisible ink that they're put on here and there, spots, so that the pattern of spots has to be the same on every single one. And then they've got intentional defect. Now, this one I thought was real curious. Talk about being smart in a stupid way. This security measure is, as its name suggests, an error made on purpose to stump the counterfeiters. An example would be an intentional misspelling in the microtext or a reoccurring misprint in a sequence of characters. For instance, here's a great example, a check signature line. The line might actually be microtext, but looks like a line to the human eye. When you magnify the image, it may say Global Savings Bank over and over and over again. However, one spot in the repeating words might be misspelled, leaving a letter out, or adding an extra letter, or actually inverting the letter. So when a counterfeiter sees that, they're gonna think, oops, what a blunder, I can make that right. And they'd make it right, which would stand out as being wrong, right? So that's the sort of thing that they're working with, but not just that, they've got other stuff too. They are working with holograms, those intricate interwoven images I was talking about, barcodes, uh, QR codes, which is a type of 2D barcode, and the NFC, which are those radio frequency chips that they can put on. So they're doing a lot, and I'm just covering a little bit of it, folks. They work with people, too. They've got a lot of different technology for authenticating people and things, and I think it's gonna be hot. People wanna protect their products. They don't want fake anything out there. So I think this is going to be big. Now that you know what the company's about, let's take a look at some of those telltale signs of success I was talking about. First off, she's got an excellent float. Seriously, this is a low float of 7.5 million shares. Now we knew it was gonna be low. Outstanding is only 9 million. Anything under 10 million in the float is seriously a low float. So we got a serious low float. Financials. Well, this is another serious telltale sign of success. Look at our annual revenues. At the end of 2021, $867,000. We know it's thousands because we got to take these three zeros and put them behind any of the numbers down here. So she did less than a million dollars in 2021. Now look at her quarterly. First quarter, they did $161,000. Second quarter this year, it took a jump to $4.4 million. And the third quarter, more, $5.2 million. Folks, you are talking 3,000% increase in her revenues. That is mind boggling, that is huge. Disclosures for the company. Well, this is another one of those telltale signs, oh my God. These Form 4s, these are filings that have to be submitted by the insiders whenever they buy or sell shares. Now, I'm gonna kick this more out. Right now, we're in January. We've kicked it back to September. I'm gonna do it again. Now, we're all the way back to August. I'll kick it one more time. All right, it stops there. Wow, so insiders have either been buying or selling shares since August. What do you think it is? Let's look at the very bottom one here. Take a quick peek in here. If it's green, it means they bought. The A means acquired. You can see who bought them here and who they are. But they're all insiders regardless who they are. So this person bought 2,000 shares twice. Let's take a look at another one. Uh, we'll go up to this one here. We've got 4,000, call it 5,000 shares. Let's grab that one. 7,000 shares, every single one of these is a purchase from an insider. There's a 1,500 and 2,600. Oh my God, look how many Form 4s there are, and we're just tagging. There's 60,000 shares being bought by an insider. 
closer we get to the new year, the more they're buying. Uh, there's 2,000 and 1,000. Let's go to the very top. Let's see what we got going on there. 39,000 by the executive chairman, director and officer of the company. So as you can see, there are a lot of buys. I'm guessing we haven't gone through them all and I haven't, but I'm gonna presume those are all buys. I would love to add them up and see what's going on. But the bottom line is you see confidence in a big way. They've been buying shares in their own company since August. Why? because they know something we don't. And I don't know what it is, because there hasn't been any news in a while. Let's check that news. All right, all this news is from 2020. Down here we have news being brought in from offline or online in other places. And the most recent piece of news actually from the company is a corporate update, which they didn't say much in this. It was at the very end of the year. They said they had gotten more business and they were gonna be able to fulfill all of it before the end of the year. And then right here in December, which is an important piece of news, Verify Me and HP Indigo enter into a five-year extension and expansion agreement. HP Indigo is the company that does all their invisible printing. They use a digital printing technology and this has been very intricately important to this company. They couldn't do this without them. So that's a good thing to see right there. They've got a five-year extension with this company. So there you go, folks. You got lots of insiders buying into their own stuff stock because they know something. The revenues have kicked up big time, 3,000% increase over last year. And, well, <laughs> there seems to be some interest in it. The momentum of their technology, I mean, I don't know what's really caught it on fire today, but it was churning and burning. And not just the stock, but the warrant which did 220% gains today with, I mean, just this much volume compared to how much she did, a half a million, and they did less than 2,000 shares today, wasn't it? Wow. Let's go take a look at those charts. So we're taking a look at both VRME and the warrant, VRMEW, and we're going to be doing our charting on Think or Swim. This is that free trading platform that TD Ameritrade gives you when you sign up with their free trading account. No deposit necessary. You don't even actually have to trade with them. Only thing you got to do is keep your account open, right? And you can use it anytime you like. So we got both charts up here. We're going to take a look at the common stock first. The one that had about 40% gains today. This is a six month, four hour chart. We have a high bubble back here in uh, July of $3.50, short lived. I don't know what caused that pop, but she came down and she's had more pop since then, but she's been rolling downhill ever since then, all the way down to a buck. Now I'm curious, is that a 52 week low? Let's go back to a year, yes. $1.01 .01 cent is a 52 week low. It is also a uh, 36 month low, three year low. It hasn't been that low in three years, folks. And it doesn't look like it wants to get any lower. Looks to me like the uh, investors jumped in and have pushed that price right up over the 50. She tagged on to the 200 right there. That pushed her back down under the 50. She gave it another whirl at the 200 and cracked it. Got her footing and jumped today. Jumped very, very well. She was started here at about $1.28 and hit $1.88, $1.90, somewhere in there. Lots of volume today. All that volume is just dwarfing everything else here, but you can see it was actually climbing. It just got immense today. Technicals, everything looks really strong. Every single oscillator is pushing up right now. RSI is clear up to 77 in the overbought on fire. Our MACD is a tsunami blowing off the beach. Green bars are accumulating underneath and our PPO is bouncing off that pink line surging right now. Everything looks really strong on the four hour chart for this. Let's look at our 20 day one hour. All right, we don't see a lot of strength here, do we? Not until that low bubble came into play, and that's when she started pushing up. She went from that dollar to a dollar 88, so you've got 88% gains there in, what, about 10 days? So she hasn't taken off by any means, but she is moving up, and she's gaining momentum as she does it. The technicals on the one hour, very strong. We are still on fire. 
Wow, we are at 77 on the hourly for our RSI. MACD and the PPO, they're kind of the same instrument. The PPO is percentage price oscillator. That works with a percentage of the price, where the MACD uses the whole price. Read them the same. And this is my ADX. This shows me trend continuation. As long as I have a straight line, doesn't matter if it's up or down, as long as it's straight, whatever the trend is doing, it's going to continue doing. When this line changes direction, my trend will change. I see we have a little bit of bend right now, right there at the end, and you can see she is pulling back in the aftermarket period. Looking at our five day, five minute for the common stock. So what did she start the morning off at here? A dollar 26 she came on and hit that dollar 88. Um, I'm not quite sure what that was at full range, about 45, 50%. And she has fallen after market, but it looks like she's trying to get back into position. She came deep underneath her 50 here, but has pushed herself right back up and looks like she might actually be on top of her nine day SMA. That's important. Don't overlook that. You cannot climb unless you're over the nine. You got to be on top of the nine before anything else can happen. Technical is on our five minute. Uh, is that a bounce off or a crossover? That's a crossover trying to recover right now. It's, it's wimpy. It's very wimpy. We had a drop in our MACD hard. It's under the signal line. It too is wimpy, wimpy. And our RSI, of course, is wimp number three. We're down here at 49. So I'm just looking at this stock because it's got momentum in what's going on. Lots of buyers, their revenues are increasing. I think they're taking on more contracts. It appears that way if you're making money, right? Now let's take a look at that warrant because whatever's going on for the stock is just going to be amplified by the warrant. If the stock has a bad day, chances are the warrant's going to have a worse day. So this is our six month, four hour chart for the warrant. And she has been falling from a dollar four six months ago to uh, just under two cents, uh, maybe six days ago. And she's been trying to get up over that 50 without much success. And she's trying again right now. It does look like she is over it way high, way high, but we got to see if she holds that. Our technicals are impressive though. Look at our turnaround here. She looks like she's going to bust through that and launch. It actually looks like it's going to launch just like the MACD. Oh my goodness. Look at the incline. It's almost parabolic and we've had a very strong surge in our RSI. It's thumping. It's just it's tearing it up right now. So things look strong on the four hour. She is above her 50 day SMA though. She's got a long ways to go to that 200 and that 200 is up at 45 cents. So that would be another 100% if she reached the 200. Let's look at our 20 day one hour view. Back this up a little bit more. So 20 days ago, we were at 25 cents, hit that low of two cents. And today she hit a high of 24 cents. Wow, almost her high, 24 cents. So you're looking at 1,200% plus gains from about eight, 10 days ago, from this low bubble up to here. And she has fallen back, but that's what it would have been at the high. Our technicals, very nice. Very nice, look at this. Today, particularly, we've gotten a lot of strength on the PPO and it has not ceased yet. Same with our MACD, and don't worry about this, it's going in the right direction. If it's going up with everything else, that's okay. Our RSI is at 60, which is a nice zone, but it is cooled off right now. Coming down to our five day, five minute. All right, so we've got this is yesterday. We did have a bounce yesterday. She bounced from 7.2 cents up to 12 cents. So you had about 80% run yesterday before she fell back down, right back down to the floor and started all over and started from that 7 cents and went up to 24 cents. That's over 330% gains, folks. From this morning's open to the high, 330%, and she left us 227 Nice of her. Had a nice bang. Technicals are still zooming up. Everything is pushing up. Yeah, she's bouncing, but you can see she's on an uphill climb. Everything looks delicious. I like the warrant more than the stock, but the stock looks good too. Even though she does have a pullback right now, she has settled on her 50-day SMA. So both of these are looking good. 
once some news comes out and i really think we should be expecting some sort of news some contract some company maybe the companies don't want anybody to know that they're using this protective technology then they might be targeted you know what i'm saying but they could say an unnamed company fortune 500 company has just done a two million dollar contract with us for the next three years or something like that and when we see that I expect this stock to move because it's got value it has value right now and that's what makes a stock bounce off of a low bubble the way she did well VRME and VRMEW they belong on your watch list that's my opinion you make up your own mind so you itching for another bankruptcy I got one for you this is ticker CLVS Q. The Q on the end is temporary, at least we hope so. You get the Q whenever you go into bankruptcy. And Clovis just went into bankruptcy two days ago on the 9th. Now this is Clovis Oncology. They are a cancer biotech company and they've got a drug that they've been selling for a while making really good money with that helps women with ovarian cancer. The problem is is that the FDA has been beating them up for a while and they're losing revenues in a huge way and it doesn't look like things are getting any better. Let me show you that news. There was two pieces of news here recently if you want to call it that. November and December. That's all the news we have. The news about the FDA and the news about them going into Chapter 11 bankruptcy. That's it. So this news came out in November. With the walls closing in for Clovis, FDA demands ovarian cancer restriction for Rubica. They tell us here that the already teetering on the brink Clovis Oncology was dealt another blow by the FDA. The U.S. regulator is asking Clovis to limit Rubaca's use for the second-line maintenance treatment of ovarian cancer to patients whose tumors have BRCA mutations. The drug's current label allows it to treat patients with recurrent ovarian cancer who've responded to chemo regardless of their BRCA biomarker status. Restricting Rubaca's indication would be nearly a death sentence for Clovis. That's a serious statement there. Clovis warned investors of a possible imminent bankruptcy, which has already happened, amid back-to-back -back regulatory setbacks for Rubaca, including a recent withdrawal of the drug's late-line ovarian cancer indication. That's sad. There's a lot of women out there, I'm sure, were depending on this. In the filing, Clovis noted that a substantial portion of Rubaca's revenue currently comes from the second line ovarian cancer maintenance setting. A narrowed approval could cause a significant impact on Clovis's top line, the company warned. They're talking about a narrowed approval. What if it gets rejected? It could be even worse. So the FDA is beating them up. They're losing money on their number one drug. Patients aren't going to be able to get this drug for that purpose anymore. And they just filed bankruptcy. Lots of bad news and the stock is running. So what was the relative volume around Clovis Q today? Funny, it was less than normal, dropping from 7.2 million to 5.4 million. Interesting. And we got 62% gains out of that. We kind of like that. Share structure. Looked it up on Google, found a number repeated, 100 million. Not a high float, not a low float, just your everyday average float. Taking a look at this bankrupt company's financials, well, they're not broke, are they? At the end of 2021, they did $148 million, got to keep $109 million. On the quarterly, let's see what we got here. 30, 32, 34, so it looks like you're still making money. Things don't look bad on this side. What about that balance sheet? That's the other side of the coin. Revenues aren't everything. Well, let me see our total assets. We got $472 million in total liabilities. Oh, 751. So we've got almost a half a billion, $402 million in debt. Whew, things are pretty dark for them in that arena. Our disclosures. All right, this is the 8K that came out when they got removed off the NASDAQ, and this is their bankruptcy, just the other week it just got announced and that's all we got going here and you saw the news again all we're talking about is the fda beating them up and this bankruptcy so they've left the nasdaq they're down on the otc they've just announced bankruptcy two days and what's happening what we expect it's running is there any more run left let's go see
So we're going to look at Clovis both before and after the bankruptcy ticker change. We're going to start off with the common stock ticker CLVS. This is a six month, four hour chart and all of this is on the NASDAQ. We had a high bubble back here of $3.25 in July. Obviously some good things were happening here. Not quite sure what's happening here. Maybe this is the first blow from the FDA because right here is when the news came out about the second blow from the FDA. And this is when the company also announced that they were thinking about bankruptcy. And from there, she has been falling. Had a couple mild attempts trying to get through the 200 without any success here. Had a huge drop here at the first week of November, dropping from a dollar down to 20 cents. Eat gads. And even from there, she was not done falling. She kept falling down, got down all the way to seven cents right here, and finished her day on the NASDAQ at eight cents. That was December 20th. On December 1st, after closing on eight cents on December 20th, she opens up at four and a half cents roughly and then bounced right back up. So she dropped 50% and then jumped right back up, which is a hundred percent gain. So if you happen to get in down here at the low bubble, you made a hundred percent just on recovery. She then started drooping lower and lower. And on the ninth, when the announcement came out about bankruptcy, she took off. She started running here, folks. She started off at uh, about five cents and has gone to uh, about 19 cents just shy of 400% gains in the last three days since she went bankrupt. This is not good news. Technicals are real strong, especially to today. Our PPO is crossed over and climbing. Our ADX has got a nice straight line saying that the trend is continuing. MACD is very strong. Nice accumulation of green bars here with no small ones in sight. And our RSI is still on fire in the overbought at about 72, 73. 20 day, one hour view for CLVSQ. So there's your run. Started off gentle, coming out from underneath the 50, on top of the 50. See how big the price bars get, folks. They're real tiny underneath the 50. When the price bar gets on top of the 50, you can normally see some bigger bars. So she jumped up there on top of a 50 and started picking up momentum. Second gear yesterday, third gear today. She started this morning off at seven cents going up to that 19 cents. What is that? About uh, 150% gains that you got on your investment. She fell from that 18 cents down to about 12 cents, just above her uh, nine day SMA looking good. That's a good placement. Now you got to remember folks, when you see the price get way far away from the SMA, it's got to come back. When SMAs, nine day, 20 day, 50 day, when they get too far apart from each other, they too come back. Everything's on a rubber band. So if you see a lot of distance between your price and the SMA, you may want to sell. Chances are it's going to spring back to that SMA or even worse, past it and go below it. So this was a great place to sell. She came back down down and she is sitting down here right now. Our one hour technicals, still pretty bloody strong. Our PPO is pushing up and even though it's planning out a little, it's still showing signs of growth as is our MACD, though our green lines are starting to diminish. Our RSI has fallen below the overbought, but it's still high, up at 67.68. Five day, five minute. So she had a nice run here. Two days, two and a half days, she ran all the way up and she did start down here at that nickel to 19 cents. So you are looking at almost 400% gains before she fell. She's come down through her 50 and is underneath, is she underneath? Uh, duh. Yeah, just barely, just barely underneath the nine. I really look for that. The price sounds silly, but the price cannot climb unless it's over the nine. So you really don't want to get into a stock until the price is over the nine day SMA, wherever that may be. If you're thinking about getting in, it's not going to climb till it's on top of the nine. Just remember that. So she has had a fall here and she stopped right there with no activity after market. Technicals, everything looks like it is on a decline right now. She doesn't show any signs of coming back from the technicals. So Clovis Q, 
just announced they went into bankruptcy, went into it two days ago, been climbing ever since the bad news came out, and she's taking a dip right now. I personally would watch for the dip, watch it come down hard, wait for it to find its bottom, and then look for it to cross one of the strong SMAs and look for the volume to come in. And we'll probably get another bounce. Can't guarantee it, but we see it over and over and over again. Why not get set up and ready for it? Put CLVSQ in your watch list. When you see the numbers start jumping in volume, that may be your opportunity calling. Hello? Last stock we're looking at is on the NASDAQ, and it was a penny stock this morning. This is ticker AMV, Atlas Motor Vehicles. She literally was at about $2.70 this morning, and big news came out. The company got a huge order for their EV batteries. Now, the company does a lot of different things. They work with EV charging. They have an EV vehicle. They work with the batteries. They've got solar shingles. I mean, they do a lot but they're not making any revenues. So the news that came out today was hot. Now, I realize at $10, it's not a penny stock anymore, and you probably aren't going to invest in it. But I think it's important that we take a look at this because she had all of the markings of a popper today, being a U.S. company in the EV market and just going into revenues with a huge order was exciting, as you can see. She finished the day at $10.08 with 276% gains. So we've jumped on over here to their website to give you an idea about this battery because this is what the big order was for, their batteries. And this is their battery right there, believe it or not. This is a fast charge battery. It does a full charge in 15 minutes. They call it the Atlas Cube Cell Battery. And you can see how big it is. Now that's not the whole battery that goes into the car. What they do is they take a whole bunch of those and they create a battery for the car. So there's a whole lot of those little cubes in here, which isn't anything new. We've been making batteries like this for a very long time. You can open up those square Latin batteries and you'll see a bunch of batteries inside those. Open up a AAA battery, you'll see a bunch of hearing aid batteries inside. So it's not a new concept. So this is how they do their technology and it is fast charging. So what was the relative volume around their big news today? Well, let's see, they normally do 200,000 shares. Wow, today they jumped to 40 million. You're looking at, uh, what is that, 200 times her normal volume? I think that's right. It was incredible, 200,000 to 40 million. Wow. Whoa, look at this, we got another low float, folks. It's under 10 million. I looked it up, it is just about 8 million. It's a wonderful float. We've had some real nice stocks today with low floats. Financials for AMV, well, as I said, they are not making any money. They got nothing coming in on the annual, nothing coming in on the quarterly, which is what makes this news so relative and important. Disclosures. We got any new disclosures over here? Well, uh, they did have an 8K come out just a few days ago. This had to do with some big investors coming in, some sort of note that they're doing, but nothing about shares for us. And looking at that news. All right. So this is their news over the last three months. Atlas Motor Vehicles enters mass production trial of their AMV battery technology. They were making sure that they could keep up with orders, and obviously they can. They got a big order. Atlas Motor Vehicles and Halley Solar partner to provide solar shingle paneling and energy storage solutions. That should be big business as well. EV maker Atlas Motors stock rallies 200% after hitting all-time low. That was today. That's today's news. Yeah, I told you she was running. And Atlas Motor Vehicles reaches 2 gigawatt hours in customer demand for batteries. This is the news that got everything running today. Let's take a look at this. So they tell us here that Atlas Motor Vehicles, a vertically integrated electric vehicle technology ecosystem company, and the first battery manufacturer to be fully owned and operated in the U.S., 
today announced it has reached a milestone of two gigawatt hours worth of battery capacity demand in the form of a non-binding letter, a memorandum of understanding, and purchase order from multiple customers in the automotive, heavy equipment, and solar industries. Now, they're not saying they've got one battery that can handle two gigawatts of hours. A gigawatt is a million kilowatts, and your average car battery has anywhere from 60 to 100 kilowatts, and they say that they have got 2 million kilowatts worth of orders. So whatever size their batteries are, you got to divide that into that, and that's what they're selling. They just haven't broke it down for us like that. But whatever it is, it's a lot. And they even mentioned solar panels here, solar industry. So I'm not exactly sure what sort of stuff they're selling, but when you're not making any money whatsoever and you get a big order in, that's good news. That's what everybody's looking for. And does this list it? Well, they don't list themselves as a shell company. I don't think they do that on the NASDAQ, but that's what they are. They're not making any money and they are coming out of shell status, if you will. And that's always exciting on the OTC market. I guess it's exciting on the NASDAQ as well. Let's go take a look at this once upon a time OTC stock. So we are now looking at ticker AMV. This is a six month, four hour chart. Go ahead and be amazed. Look at that high bubble, folks. September 28th, she was at $280. Took a huge fall in a week from 280, fell all the way down here to $11, and has actually been falling since then. Trickle, trickle, trickle down here to $2.26, which I do believe was this morning. Lots of volume today, and the technicals got strong just today. Just today they took off. PPO has had its crossover. Our RSI has shot up from the basement of 31 all the way up here to 80 right now. So on the four hour, it's not looking too bad. One hour chart. All right, I've got some lines drawn here. This is a support and resistance, and this is a support and resistance. Taking it right off of the top of this big bounce here, and just before she started to fall, there was a lot of price action all in a line. I drew one there too, so I expected the price to get to these points, argue with them, and get above them, and we can see what's exactly going on. And then right here, we had a channel. I drew a line just across the highs, these two highs right there, that's it, and then launched it forward to see where this would probably go. And boy, did this pay off. Our technicals on the one hour are very, very strong. Our PPO is screaming up. She is at 45 right now. ADX has a continuation line that isn't ceasing. Our MACD is very strong with just a little bit of pullback right now, and our RSI is in the overbought at just over 70. Looking at our five-day, five-minute. So this is our first support here. You can see, even though that was all the way back then, once she bounced and started running, she hit this channel mark, which I drew. She then bounced back down to that support, bounced off that support, hit this support on her head, fought to get over it, came down. Now we're on top of the channel, right? It's respecting all of these lines that were drawn from points on the chart before. She is stuck in there now between the top support and this channel, fighting it hard. And here comes our 50-day SMA cutting through everything. It actually looks like it has potential. Our technicals don't agree with me. <laughs> Not at all. Our technicals show everything is coming down. Everything is pushing down. The only thing pushing up, surprisingly, is our RSI. Not by much, but it is trying to come up right now, right there. So she is struggling with that channel line that I drew on that one hour chart right here. She is struggling to get on top of that again. I believe if she can get on top of that, she's going to have an easy time getting on top of this support, and she's going to run some more. I honestly do. You've got an EV company that is here in the United States, not making any money, just had a big order for their batteries that are fast charging batteries. That is hot, folks. There's going to be a lot of companies that are going to want that sort of technology. So AMV, even though it's not a penny stock, you may want to watch it. You may want to invest in it, but that's up to you. So what do you think of the stocks we looked at today? You like them? 
I did. I thought they had some good, strong potential. Verify Me, ticker VRME. That company's going to be hot. Lots of companies want to protect what they make. They're losing money. They're losing their reputation. It's going to help them make money. And this company's already making huge money. They've jumped 3,000%. They've got lots of inside buyers right now, and their technology is going to be hot. There's no doubt about that. Then we got our bankruptcy play of the day, Clovis Q. Shame that they're having so much problems with that drug, and I'm not quite sure this company's going to recover. I don't think so, but what do I know? But in the meantime, it's probably good for a few more bounces. And the last stock we looked at, that was AMV. Not a penny stock anymore. It was. Do you see how fast they can just go to the moon? And I don't think this one's done. With the high of $280, there's room. I'm not saying it's going to go back to $280, but it could see $20, could see $30, $40, $50. Bucks. Remember, this is a U.S. company. This is where we want to invest. We are looking for green energy in America, and this company fits perfectly. AMV may not be a penny stock anymore, but I think it's worth investing in if that's your cup of tea. Remember folks, there's a lot going on out there and I can't cover it all, so I hope you're doing some DD too. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.